Is the Cartier Love Bangle worth it? I feel like this is my favourite piece of jewellery ever. Oh, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to what is one of my most requested videos ever. As many of you know, I am the biggest jewellery lover of all time. It's possibly my biggest love even before handbags, which you all know how much I love my handbags, but jewellery has to be my biggest passion in life. This might not be the jewelry collection video you guys are expecting though, because it's not gonna be me showing you every single piece I own, but what it is, it's going to be me reviewing my main pieces of jewelry that I wear, and also the pieces of jewelry that you guys ask the most questions about. I really feel like I've been putting off filming this video, and that is for probably two different reasons. Number one is because it's so rare that I have all of my jewelry in one place. It's why you'll see me wear the same necklace over and over again, and then I'll switch to something else, because I don't keep all of my jewelry here. I am missing a couple of pieces today, but most of the things are here just for the day. And the second reason is because I wanted to wait until I'd had a few of these pieces a number of years until I did a proper review because how can I review something if I only had something a few months like I wouldn't be able to tell you about wear and tear and if I still like it and if I think that it's worn well and things like that but now the fact that I've owned these pieces have I got hair on my lip but now the fact I've owned some of these pieces a number of years I feel like I can give you a proper review so I asked you guys over on Instagram to ask me some jewelry related questions and I have them all here so I'm going to pick one at random and we're gonna get going. So the first question, where is your initial pinky ring from? Now this is the ring that I wear on my little finger. I'm gonna do a cutaway here just so you can see everything a little bit better than me showing you from this distance. But this ring is from Liberties of London. It was actually a gift for my birthday last year from five of my friends and I love it so much. There's actually a few of us that all have the same matching ring. So it's solid gold with diamonds. It was actually a really reasonable price given that. In terms of wear and tear, can't lie, it is very, very scratched. But any type of gold piece that kind of has like a flat gold surface just gets mega scratched. But I feel like the scratches really add character. It does need a bit of a clean. Hopefully by the time I'm showing you here, I have actually cleaned it. But it is probably my most complimented piece of jewelry, whether it's online or whether I'm out in about i've had so many people ask me where it's from and i love it so much question number two are cartier bangles worth the splurge now i feel like this is actually a big debate and technically if you're just going off of the weight of the gold no you could go and get yourself a solid gold bangle that weighed the same as a cartier bangle in terms of the weight of the gold that would cost a fraction of the price that cartier charged for their love bangles however like any brand in the world whether it's chanel van cleef whatever it might be you are paying for the brand that's written on it so you pay a premium because it is cartier so if we were just talking about the weight of the gold as already mentioned it probably wouldn't be a great purchase however because it is cartier they actually really tend to hold their value because like many other luxury brands once again i'm talking about chanel and many of the others louis vuitton is the same as well they have price increases sometimes multiple times a year and because the cartier love bangle goes up in price every single year it means if you ever come to a point where you'd like to resell yours chances are you won't make too much of a loss on it because it's gone up in value but for my personal answer and if i think they're worth the splurge then my answer would definitely be yes I think it's a beautiful piece of jewellery. I know that lots of people have them and they've almost become a bit of a running joke that everyone has these kind of tags on their arm, which is a Cartier Love bangle. However, I just think they're such a classic and iconic piece of jewellery and I absolutely love mine. They dress up any outfit. They're so comfortable and easy to wear and I've had my smallest one almost four years and there's barely been a day I haven't had it on my wrist and I love it just as much today as when I bought it four years ago. I'd also like to say... I got this bracelet duty free, the smallest one I got duty free back when duty free was a thing in the UK airport as I was going to Dubai and I believe I paid about £3,000, maybe just under, it was like £2,900 for it. Today this bracelet is worth £4,250, so the price increases have been increasing. <laughs> Someone else also asked about the wear and tear of the Cartier bracelets and do they scratch? Yes, they scratch a lot. As I mentioned about my pinky ring, any kind of sort of shiny, flat, kind of soft surface gold, if that makes any sense, scratches so badly. And that's just something you have to learn to live with and love about the Cartier bangles. They look so beautiful when you first put them on and they're so shiny and perfect. 
but they will get scratched. Even if you are super careful with them and you wrap your arm in cotton wool, they are still going to scratch. But that's just part of wearing them. And I feel like the scratches, as I said with this ring, just add a little bit of character. And I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Another thing that Cartier actually do, I've never had this done, but you can actually send them off to be polished. And I think you can only do this twice though. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. I think you can only send them off twice in their lifetime. I think it's because maybe they sort of like shave down the gold a bit. And if you keep sending them off to get polished, maybe you'll end up with no bangle left. I'm unsure. But when they come back, they look perfect. They look good as new. I've had a few friends that have had it done. And they come back looking so shiny and like you've just bought them. But I feel like you only need to get that done after you've had your bangle. Like, I mean, I've had mine four years and I don't feel like I'm at that point yet. I feel like there is a time where they start to go really, really dull. But I swear that's when people have had them like 10 years. And I often get people message me saying that it's their 21st birthday or it's their 30th birthday or 40th, whatever birthday it might be, saying they've got a budget of x amount what should they buy and if the budget is big enough which quite often it is which i love to see then i will always say a cartier bangle whether it's the thinner one or the thicker one i think they're such a great thing to buy it's something you can keep forever you can wear almost every single day and they're something you're never going to get bored of and they just go with any outfit whether it's dressed up or dressed down i just think they're a brilliant piece of jewelry so the next question was do you shower with your VC and A? I want the MOP one, but don't take my jewellery off every time. So if any of you don't know what VC and A stands for, it is Van Cleef and Arpels. And MOP stands for Mother of Pearl. So Van Cleef jewellery, I feel like I've spoken about this a number of times on my channel, mainly about my vintage Alhambra bracelet, which is in Onyx. And I've spoken about the stones in Van Cleef jewellery and the fact that they are very, very delicate. Now, each stone is a different type of delicate if that makes sense so i believe do correct me if i'm wrong but the most delicate stone from van cleef is the malachite which is green and that i have known to just shatter like you can drop it on the floor it will break only a few times in the shower the stone will crack it's super super delicate mother of pearl i believe tends to shrink which is really strange because it's actually a stone that comes from water but all of the stones are delicate yes basically cut along so short they are however some are more delicate than others so the mother of pearl if you go into van cleef and you buy one of their bracelets they are going to tell you to take it off when you shower when you spray perfume when you get in the pool when you swim when you do anything basically even if you're washing your hands they tell you to take off your bracelet it is delicate the stones will fade they will go dull they sometimes crack the only saving grace with that though is the fact that you can actually get the stones replaced so if you do have the unfortunate situation of one of your van cleef stones snapping or breaking or discoloring whatever might happen to it you can get it replaced i don't know how much that is i think it's probably quite costly but it doesn't mean that your whole bracelet is ruined you can get it fixed that was part of the reason that i actually went for onyx because it is the most hardest wearing stone that van cleef does and i mean i should say i take it off every day to shower in but i don't i really take this off very rarely the only time i'll take it off is if i'm fake tanning is if i am in a swimming pool or sometimes I take it off before I get in the shower, very rarely if I think about it. But it is something that, I don't know, it does kind of annoy me and I am really conscious of it. And I do wish that you didn't have to take them off so much because like the lady said in that question, I am someone that doesn't like to take off my jewellery every single time I do anything. And I do find it quite annoying. Next up is, can you tell us more about your watch? Well, my watch is something I very, very rarely wear ever anymore especially in london it never gets worn it's something that's never in my house it's never with me but i have it on today for this occasion of this video so this is a rolex date just 36 millimeter i often get asked what size it is it's got a black face and then diamonds as the numbers and it is two-tone gold and silver I bought this almost four years ago now from a place called Watch Finder, which is a very reputable watch um, kind of reselling company. And I saw it online and I went to Blue Water and I went and bought it. It's something I'd wanted for so many years and I love it so much. However, it's so rare that I ever wear this watch anymore. I live in London and London isn't always the safest place. And so wearing your watch out isn't always the most sensible idea. So I used to wear this all of the time, but day to day now I don't. However, I do still love it so, so much. I do wish I had a full gold one, can't lie. But the fact I barely wear my watch, I just think, well, it doesn't really matter what it is because I never have it on my wrist anyway. Next question, what purchases do you regret and what purchases were totally worth the money? Now, 
I never have that many purchases that I regret because whenever I'm going to spend some money, I'm always going to think about it long and hard. However, I feel like I do have one purchase that I made that I don't regret it because I still love it, but I'm going to show you it anyway. So this necklace is a necklace that is from Cartier. It's the Justin Clue necklace with the diamonds. I'm going to show you in a cutaway so you can see it up close. Now, I got this in Paris last year and I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. I just... It's just such a gorgeous piece. I love it so much. However, I'm going to tell you the truth about this necklace. I bought this because I wanted something else, but I didn't want to spend the money on the something else because it was a lot more money than this. And I tried to buy this to kind of stop myself from wanting the other thing. Is this making any sense? I hope it is. I really felt that this necklace was going to fill the gap that I felt I had in my life and in my jewelry collection. And then I would stop thinking about the other necklace that I wanted. In fact, it didn't happen at all. I ended up spending my money on this. And then about four months later, I ended up buying the necklace that I actually wanted. So I actually spent way more money because I bought this. And I never really wear it because... I love the one that I bought after it, which is just the most stupid thing to do ever. And I feel like there's a real lesson in this. And it's actually like a saying that I often say, and my mum often says, my dad often says, which is buy nice or buy twice. I'm not saying this isn't nice. This necklace is beautiful and I really do love it so much. But buy what you want, otherwise you'll end up buying it twice over, if that makes sense. If you try and fill the gap with something else, you're still going to want what you really want. And then long term, you're going to end up buying both. But just to reiterate once again, I definitely will wear this necklace again. And I really do love it so much, but I just love another necklace a little bit more. Can you talk about your ear stack and what you wear in your ear? I definitely can. My ear stack changes quite a lot though, but this is my current ear stack that I have got going on at the moment. But as I say, this kind of sometimes changes day to day, just depending on my outfit, my mood, and yeah, what I feel like wearing in my ear. But at the moment, the top two hoops, I've actually had these in for a little while to be fair. The top two hoops here are gold diamond huggy hoops and they are both from Missouri. They're actually matching. So comfortable. Missouri do brilliant jewelry. I actually have a lot of pieces in my collection from them. Rings that I wear on an everyday basis, like this Eternity band just here. I wear this every single day. And they're actually much more affordable than, let's say, the likes of Cartier and Van Cleef. So if you are in the market for gold and diamond jewellery, but you don't want to spend ridiculous amounts, Missouri is always a great brand to look into if you're a jewellery lover like me. So yeah, the first hoops there are from uh, Missouri. The second earring is also diamond and gold, and that is also from Missouri. And then the stud in my first ear is also diamond and gold, and this is from a place called Purely Diamonds. Now, I can't tell you what diamond size these are, because to be quite honest with you, I have no idea. I did think the first studs were one carat, but... I don't think that's true. I feel like they are quite a bit smaller. I would, however, love, and I feel like it's something that I might treat myself for my 30th birthday, a pair of, let's say, 1.2 or 1.5 carat diamond earrings. Let's say VVS one D color, so they are the perfect diamond. I feel like I'd love those. And they'd be such a great investment because they're kind of like an everyday earring, super comfortable to wear, and I feel like they're so timeless as well, but yeah. That's my earring stack currently. The next question is, where is your tennis bracelet from? Well, I actually have two tennis bracelets. One is from Missouri, which I'll insert a video, and the other one is from Purely Diamonds. I don't actually wear these enough. Something I would really, 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 really love is a much bigger tennis bracelet that I could wear kind of just with my love bangles. I think that would look amazing. Um, I don't wear these enough, to be honest. I do love them, but they're really quite delicate. And as the jewelry I have on my wrist is quite chunky, I just feel like they kind of get lost and then they'll get tangled up. But I feel like they're both really beautiful bracelets. And I often get questions, especially on the Missouri one, because it's super sparkly and like it looks really nice on. Which do you prefer, the love bracelet or the just include bangle well i feel like this is a really really hard question to answer because i love them both for different reasons i love that the just include is a little bit cooler not that many people have it compared to the love bangle i feel like it's a little bit more understated and it's kind of like if you know you know kind of thing whereas the love bangle is like everyone knows it's cartier and i mean everyone knows what a just include is but it's not as common is what i'm trying to say however i feel like the love bangle for me will always be my go-to. I just think it's much more iconic and it's much more wearable. And something else that I don't love about the Just Include is it gets caught on a lot of stuff. There's been many times I've nearly ripped my arm off because of this thing. For example, if you were in knitwear, if I was to put my arm through it, I'm just going to just show you something. Look, it kind of goes through the knitwear. 
and you can end up getting it caught on so many things and you kind of rip your arm like that the same goes for the ring the ring is probably worse because the kind of point of the nail is super super sharp on the ring and i often rip a jumper rip a top because of it so that's something that kind of annoys me about the Justin Clue. I do love it. I think it's super cool. I think it's really different. But the fact it gets caught on a lot is something that really annoys me. And also another thing about the bangle, which I didn't realise this was a thing. And then I watched a TikTok video. That's why we can learn a lot from TikTok. And it made me look at my bangle. And I realised it had happened to mine. But I always used to wear my Justin Clue nail head against my Cartier Love bangles. And this TikTok basically said, if you keep doing that, the nail head is going to wear down on one side and it's going to become dented. I was thinking, as if mine isn't. I looked at my wrist and it actually is. It's actually worn down, only slightly, but it's definitely worn down and it's much sharper on that side than the other side. So I've actually had to switch the way that I wear it. I think that's really bad. So if any of you have this out there, make sure you switch it because it is actually a thing and it has actually half ruined my bangle. I feel like I need to send it off to kind of get polished because it doesn't look great. Do you still have your name necklace in Arabic? You used to wear that all of the time. Now you have a very good memory and you have been watching the videos for an awfully long time, but I do. This is never in my house. It's amongst loads of things said that don't stay here, but I have it here today and it looks like this. This is my name, I believe it's my name, in Arabic. My sister used to live in Qatar and she bought it for me on Christmas and I wore it all of the time. I love it so much and the only reason I don't wear it more is just because it's not always here but I just think it's so beautiful. Arabic writing is just stunning and it looks so nice on like on your chest and yeah I love this necklace so much and I feel like it's got a lot of sentimental value as well because my sister bought it for me. Tiffany tea ring, is it worth it? Durability, I would love to get one. So in my opinion, it is worth every single penny. I love this ring so, so much. I've only had it since Christmas, but I've worn it pretty much every single day since. I love the hand that kind of it sits on. Like I love this kind of setup that I have going on. I feel like it's really simple, but I just think it's so different. I love the fact that not everyone has the Tiffany T collection like Cartier, you know, we've already spoken about that. You see Cartier everywhere. I'm not saying that Tiffany is unique because you still see it a lot, but I feel like a lot less people have this. So that's something I love about it. In terms of durability, it really isn't that old, but of course it's scratched like any piece of gold jewelry does, but I think it's held up so well. The top bit isn't scratched at all and it's still super shiny. The diamonds are really sparkly and I really couldn't rate it more. I love it so much. I would absolutely love to get the Tiffany tea bangle with the diamonds to match. That's definitely on my wish list. And having the ring has made me want the bangle even more because I'd love to wear them together. I definitely think if you want it, get it. Thoughts on the Van Cleave Perle, I don't know if I'm saying that right, by the way, signature bangle. I want to add it to my stack, but wanted your opinion. I absolutely love it. I think it's so beautiful. I'm going to insert a photo around here because I don't own this piece and it's just a dream. But it's so expensive. Like, so, 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 so expensive. But if you've got the money, buy it because I just think it's stunning. I think it's so different. Not everyone has it. I understand why people don't have it because it's, it's a lot of money. But... I think it's a great piece to have in your collection. I do actually have one friend that has this bangle and whenever I see her, I just look at it and drool. It's so pretty. Definitely get it. It's such a stunning piece. Do you like the Bulgari Serpentine collection? Why don't you have anything from that? Well, if you've watched my wishlist video of 2023, I definitely put on my wish list that I would like some Bulgari pieces. I absolutely love that collection. I think it's so stunning, but it is very, very, very pricey. I looked not long ago at one of the rings and I, I nearly fainted at the price, I can't lie, but they're very beautiful, so sparkly. I would absolutely love one of the bangles. They are just a dream, so, so nice. I did actually try one on not so long ago and it looks so good stacked on my arm. But right now in my life, it is not sensible spending that kind of money on a bangle. But it doesn't mean I won't do it in the future and it doesn't mean that I don't love it. Please can you tell us where your chain earring is? Well, I don't actually have it in today, but I do regularly wear, I'll show you in a cutaway, a chain that goes from kind of like here to here and it's actually something you can wear on any earring and it's from a brand called idol i actually wear a lot of their pieces especially when it comes to kind of like my earrings but i love that chain so much what i wish is i could have 
a piercing up here so I could wear the chain kind of like hook to here. However, I can't do that because I have had my cartilage up here pierced, I want to say five times and it just never ever ever heals i try again it just gets infected like i've done it so many times over the years and it just never works out but a chain would look so cool going up there but it is another really great a little bit more affordable jewelry brand that if you're into your jewelry which i'm guessing you are if you're watching this video you should definitely go and check out i feel like i've answered most of the questions i feel a lot of them are repeat so you're all asking about kind of cartier you're all asking about van cleef um my earrings and I feel like I've covered most of it to be honest what a lot of you are asking though is what is on my wish list which I always think is a really fun question and I always love to know what's on yours so please comment down below with what's on your wish list first of all but what is on mine I always have an extensive jewelry wish list like it is never ending but as you guys already know I would really love a tennis bracelet like I would adore a tennis bracelet. I'd love a really nice size pair of diamond stud earrings to, sounds so bad to replace these, but yeah, I just love a really kind of generous size stud earring. Something I recently got, which is going to be a little bit of a surprise Cartier unboxing for you all guys is inside this box i actually featured these on my wish list of 2023 so if you watch that you might know what's inside here but i actually treated myself to these the other day for a number of reasons but the first reason is because i've spoken about this a number of times but i have a harrods card and if you don't have a harrods card you need to get one because for every pound you spend you earn points and then the points turn into money and then you can spend the money on real things in store which is just brilliant and it's another reason why i spend half my life in harrods because you can buy anything from there from your shopping i mean i never buy my groceries from harrods i mean at christmas i bought a few but day to day i do not do that but you can buy your makeup from harrods you can buy handbags you could buy pet stuff kids stuff like it's not all crazy overpriced things i think shopping at harrods sounds so bougie but the truth is is it sells everything that everyone else does for the same price it's just underneath one roof and when you spend on your Harrods card, as I've said, you gain points and then the points turn into money and you can spend the money on stuff. So I actually had £500 to spend on my Harrods card. So I got £500 off of what is inside this box. So these felt like an absolute bargain. So they are the Cartier Love Hoop earrings. And can I show you a little bit up close? They look like this. They are so comfortable in. I don't know anyone that's got them. I feel like they were just something a little bit different. Something that I could, if I wanted to, wear on an everyday basis, but just different to um, the diamonds that I wear in my ears at the moment. Shall I actually put them in for you? Now, I wouldn't wear them with my other hoop earrings. I think they look too much, but I love them in. I think they're so simple. And I kind of wanted them more than anything to wear when my hair is up, like in a ponytail or in kind of like a bun, slick. And then with the hoop earring in, there's such a comfortable closure as well. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, I'll show you in a cutaway. I think I've said I'll show you in a cutaway a hundred times in this video, but there's such a comfortable closure and they feel really secure in your ear. They do feel a little bit tight though. I'm hoping that after a while my ear will kind of get used to them. And they're also not too heavy. Like they're heavy enough so you know that your money has been spent well, but they're not dragging your ear down. I just love them. I think they're really different to anything else that I own. And the fact that I saved myself £500 off of them. I mean, guys, if that is not your sign to get a Harrods card, I do not know what is. It doesn't cost you any money as well, by the way. This is an ad. I wish it was. I wish I worked with Harrods. I do not. One day I will putting that out there but if you spend money and you buy designer things or not even it doesn't even have to be designer as i already said it could be makeup and things like that then look into getting one because where in the world would you actually just get given 500 pounds for just spending money i mean i think an amex does that that's actually something else i've actually wanted to look into i feel like maybe i should get an amex anyway back to the wish list so those hoop earrings were on my wish list but they have now been purchased something else that's on my wish list is the cartier parve love bangle i mean i'd love the thick one it's an absolute dream but i mean the skinny one oh, i love it so much that is so high on my wish list but yeah the price is a lot i also love the full vintage alhambra diamond bracelet from van cleef another piece that is so much money like so much money but it's definitely on my wish list and we can dream something else that is on my van cleef wish list which i have actually put a request in for because it's what i'm hoping to buy myself for my 30th birthday is the full gold vintage alhambra bracelet i love that so much and the great thing is with that unlike the van cleef stones this is gold and even though it will scratch 
it won't get damaged like the stones do. So that would be a really nice thing that I don't have to take off and I can wear sort of on an everyday basis. I'm trying to think what else I'm after. I really want, as I've already mentioned, the Bulgari Serpentine bracelet. I also want the ring. I feel like, guys, my wish list is never ending, but at the same time, I am very happy with what I have and I feel very lucky that I'm able to save money and then invest into jewelry pieces that I absolutely love. But I feel like I've been talking forever. I hope you found this video helpful. I was hoping it to be like a little bit educational at the same time and not come across like, look at my jewelry, look at this, look at that. And just like kind of showing off because that is absolutely not what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you guys with your purchases and give you some advice. If I did miss anything out that you would like to know more about, then just comment down below and I will get back to you with all of the answers as always thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video and i will hopefully see you in my next one take care guys bye bye